and welcome to my channel. As you will notice, the background is a little bit different and today we are filming in my kitchen, which is now a mess because I spent the entire night baking. And there are my dirty dishes, which I'm not going to be washing. Shout out to Kyle. Woo! I baked a ton of treats, a bunch of cookies, and some cake pops and cake balls. That's what she said. I'm really excited to show you because I will be turning these dollar store treat bags and tins from Michaels into really cute little gift bags and gift sets for friends and family. I'm also going to be sharing a family recipe with you, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is bake your cake. For this recipe, my family typically uses a chocolate cake and it's any brand and version that you like. It's just your average box chocolate cake and I will leave all your ingredients and everything you need in the description box. So go ahead and refer to that for anything that you might need. After baking your cake, you're going to crumble it up into a large mixing bowl and just get all of the giant pieces and use your hands to mix it all together. And using any brand cream cheese frosting, you're going to take about half of that can and mix it in with your cake. Once the two are mixed together, you're going to need a Tupperware container and you can use any type of scooper that you want. I just happen to have one fourth measuring cup handy, so I use that to scoop out a little bit at a time and roll it into a ball. You want to keep in mind that these are going to be cake pops and you don't want them to be too large or too small, so definitely remember that as you're portioning them out. And once you're done with that, you can pop that container into the freezer because we're going to be moving on to chocolate dipped Oreos and cookies. And I'm going to be using this sprinkle pack that I got at my and these are really cute they're all Christmas themed sprinkles and you can leave your chocolate dipped Oreos plain if you'd like but this kind of just dresses them up a little bit using a chocolate melter from Michaels and white chocolate that you can get at any bulk food store you're going to dip half of your Oreo cookie into the melted chocolate and before it dries put your sprinkles on it and just lay it onto a piece of parchment paper once it dries, it'll peel right off the parchment paper and you can store it until you're ready. Repeat the process for all your cookies and don't forget to periodically stir your chocolate so that it doesn't burn. And here comes the easy part of this DIY. I'm going to be using Nestle cookies that were on sale at my local Ralph's. And the first set that I'm going to be using are the gingerbread cookie sheets. These things are amazing. I was a little concerned that they would taste weird or that it was just too good to be true because they are ready to go. You pull the sheet out of the package and use a cookie cutter to achieve any design you like and they're ready to go in the oven. It was that simple and I've been wanting to make gingerbread cookies for a while now but all the recipes that I found you know seem a little time consuming and I just don't have time for that. I just want to eat the cookies so these were really cool because I had never seen anything like that. When I found them at my store I had to get a bunch. This dough was remarkably easy to work with and any part that didn't fit the cookie cutter on, I just rolled up into a ball and used the excess to try to fit as much as possible that way I wasn't wasting any of the dough. And then I was able to move on to my other set of cookies which were just Nestle chocolate chip cookies that had red and green chocolate chips so they were a little bit more festive than usual. While those are in the oven you can return to your cake pops and after spending a little bit of time in the freezer, they should be ready to dip into chocolate. If they aren't firm enough, don't start yet. Wait for them to solidify a little bit more because you don't want them to fall apart when you put them in the chocolate. When you put them into the chocolate, just make sure that you cover the cake ball completely and then you can scoop it out with your spoon. If any of the chocolate comes off when you do that, just kind of touch it up before you add your sprinkles and you should be ready to go. They dry fairly fast and I added a variety of sprinkles to mine from my sprinkle kit and they came out really well. For the actual cake pops, before you do anything, you're going to want to put the cake pop stick into the chocolate and then place it into the cake pop. This kind of acts like a glue and it keeps the stick from falling out as easily. Then you can just dip the cake pop into your melted chocolate and just make sure you completely cover the entire cake pop with chocolate and lightly tap on the side of your melting pot to get the excess chocolate to fall off and then you can add your sprinkles and you're good to go. And here are the finished cookies. Along with the cake pops, I also made chocolate chip cookies, dark chocolate and peppermint cookies, gingerbread cookies, and chocolate dipped Oreos. And afterwards, seeing them all laid out on the plates like that, I was like, oh my goodness, I made way too many cookies. But that was the great thing about the Nestle packages is that since they're ready to bake, you can decide to make the whole package then or later. And I completely forgot to think about that and I just made the entire package, but it worked out in the end because I was able to make a lot of gift bags and completely fill my tins. So I just cut up a piece of tissue paper and placed it at the bottom of each tin and then went layer by layer and just filled each tin until I couldn't fit any more cookies. And it came together really well. I was really excited to give those to my friends 
and coworkers. For the gift bags, I did the same exact thing, just went layer by layer of each type of cookie and treat until I thought they were filled pretty well. And I was really surprised at how many items I could actually fit in those gift bags, so that was really good too. I've never made gingerbread cookies before, but I will say I will never make them unless I'm using those sheets because just, nope, I'm not doing all that. <laughs> and that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys can use some of my ideas. I love baking treats, especially for coworkers and friends. And you know what? You're always the most popular person when you walk into a room with a bunch of cookies and treats in your hands, so. Yeah. As always, don't forget to tweet me at HeatherMoxieDIY and comment and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And until next weekend, I don't know if I'll be uploading a video during Christmas weekend, but if I do, I'll see you then. And if I don't, I'll see you the next weekend. So, bye! I haven't really decided yet because I want him to be able to open something on Christmas. Like, I want him to be able to tear at the paper and do all that. And a bag isn't really that fun for a one-year-old, but...